Cash Flow Diary Podcast, Episode 17. Congratulations, you showed up. Give yourself a high five in celebration of your success. Welcome to the Cash Flow Diary, where new and experienced investors come to take confident action towards their goals. Your host is a family man, a real estate entrepreneur, investor, coach, and instructor. As a master facilitator of Robert Kiyosaki's Cash Flow 101 game, he's inspired many to begin their journey into creating cash flow for themselves and their family. And now, here he is to offer you the tools required to earn the income desired. Your cash flow coach, Jay Massey. Well, hello, Cash Flow Diary listeners. Glad to have you back one more time. Excellent. If this is your first time listening, you uh, would want to go over and take advantage of our free ebook. It is Investing Made Easier Wholesaling. It's simply teaching you how to go out there and acquire and be able to purchase and transact real estate uh, of any kind, you know, be that a single family house, a townhouse, condo, land, commercial, etc. Uh, with using none of your own money or credit, etc. And you'll be able to go ahead and, and uh, download that ebook. Just go over to cashflowdiary.com, put your name in the box, you'll get the manual. Uh, you and you'll be receiving uh, additional videos and information to go along with the manual to help you go out there and become excellent wholesalers and real estate investors. It's a, a series that's very close to my heart, as many of you know, simply because that's how I started out in this business, this was being able to wholesale property uh, to those that were looking for it, find a good deal at a discount, sell it at a discount, and make some money in the middle. Anyway, uh, if you also are listening uh, still for the first time, make sure you go over and hear episode one just to understand the background and format of the show. And as a last announcement, uh, every 10 episodes or so, remember, we answer questions. So go over to the website. Uh, you can hit the little send voicemail link if you're at cashflowdiary.com and uh, send in your question. We'll hear your voice. That'd be great. Or you can email it to questions at cashflowdiary.com. Now, this could be a question on rental real estate, fixing and flipping, single family, uh, or even, you know, maybe some of you are just out there hoping to carry some notes or something. Maybe that that's what you're looking for. Either way it goes, feel free to send in your information uh, and your question, and we'll do our best to address it. All right. With that being said, one of the things that I like to do for with every one of our episodes is have an opportunity for a quote of some kind. So this particular quote comes to us from a well-known source, and here it is. It was character that got us out of bed, commitment that moved us into action, and discipline that enabled us to follow through. That comes from none other than Mr. Zig Ziglar. He, for those of you who may not know who he is, uh, he was an American author, salesperson, as well as a motivational speaker. Most people know him as a motivational speaker and or someone who taught sales, etc. And, you know, I, I like this particular quote because it's it's kind of the subject of what we're going to talk about today in terms of guaranteeing results. It was character that got us out of bed. Now, I mean, how many of us, when we're thinking, you know, when that alarm goes off, you go, man, is it really that time already? And you hit the snooze button. But character gets you out of bed. Commitment that moved us into action because just because you get up or you show up or you go to wherever it is you said you were going to go doesn't mean that you're actually taking the right actions to get the job done. And discipline that enables you to follow through. What happens when you don't feel like doing it? Whatever that might be. When it happens when you don't feel like picking up the phone, writing an offer, or just answering you know, or making one more phone call, I should say. What what happens when you know that you should be making 10 more phone calls or talking to one more seller or, you know, looking at and evaluate, evaluating one more deal? What happens then? Do you just let it go? No, that's where discipline comes in and allows you to follow through. And what's really interesting about this to me or for me when I read this is, it's that last piece, that discipline to follow through, 
that oftentimes stops a lot of individuals who otherwise would achieve something great. Anyway, today, what we're going to talk about is how to guarantee results, how to uh, put yourself in a position to make sure that you are able to do, you know, and transact real estate in a relatively short period of time. And I think it's important for you to understand why this is the subject of this particular podcast. For example, um, many of you know, or maybe you don't, and this could be the first time you're hearing about it, but we started a group, a virtual group, uh, mastermind group, I should say, teaching the concept of wholesaling, simply the same thing that goes in the book. So these were people who went over to the website, they downloaded the ebook, and when you download the ebook, you get access to additional resources, etc. And then I send out an email saying, hey, you know what? Uh, let's run a, a wholesaling group and I'll be there live and teach you, etc. And we've not yet done our third meeting. We meet once a week and we continue to talk on the website in our forums. And it's been an interesting time for me because I'm just sitting here wondering why, you know, some people are have more results than others. Now, the individuals in the group are having phenomenal results in a very short period of time. And by short, I mean, say, two weeks. And there's varying levels of experience, you know, from those who have done deals before to those who have never done a deal. And I I just find it very, very interesting. I mean, we've got people who have already written offers. We've got one offer, at least as of today, that was accepted, and that was exciting. And everyone, everyone has been in contact with additional buyers and sellers, and they've all, you know, begun learning how to analyze properties for various exit strategies, etc. The thing is, I'm I'm just wondering why, what what is creating these results, and why do some people who have known about real estate longer than two weeks. I mean, we've barely known each other in this group or been working in this group, I should say, uh, for two weeks. What What is the difference? I mean, some in the group have known me for a while, but, you know, now we're working in this group format and they're finally generating results. And I, and it just got me to thinking, what is, what is so different this time? What is so different? What could be so different for you listening? Why haven't the results come, you know, uh, and that that's really perplexing to me. But more importantly, I, I here's what I think it is. You know, I I think it's a lot about what Zig Ziglar had to say. It's character that got you out of bed. It's character to a degree that helps you to continue to listen to this podcast because you're like, man, I, I made a commitment. I was going to listen to it because I believe something is going to help me. And I agree Character will help you be able to accomplish goals. It's letting your yes be yes and no be no. It's, you know, I I often tell people that if we just did 10%, if the average person did 10% of what they said they would do, they would be very successful beyond their own belief. And that's a sad state of affairs, but it's the truth. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to, to build character. And you build character one decision at a time. What does that mean? In this case, uh, I'm going to ask you to do things that you absolutely can do. For example, when the next time that you go to a networking group and you're looking for uh, additional you know, buyers, sellers, cash, capital, whatever, here's what I want you to do. Before you go to the group, I want you to set a goal. Say, I am going to meet 10 people, 10 new people. I should say, 10 people you did not know before you went there, you're going to meet them. And by meet, I mean the following things. You're going to physically talk to them. You're going to either introduce yourself and or your business or both to them. Maybe you do. And by introduce, I don't mean you have to talk first. I mean, at some point in the conversation, you're going to bring this up. Additionally, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that you obtain their name, phone number, and preferably mailing address as well. Because one of the unique techniques that I like to use is uh, I love to be able to send people handwritten notes uh, in the physical mail uh, after meeting them. And if you continue to adopt that technique, you'll be able to generate tons and tons of referrals. So there's a little tidbit for you there. But all of these things relate to character, meaning you said before you went there that you were going to get you know, 10 names, you're going to meet 10 people. 
That means you're going to talk to them. You're going to introduce your business. You're going to get their information. You're going to talk to people who are not in the in your business about your business with the intent of getting them in your business. That's how I normally teach it, and that's what you're going to go do. But you're going to make that commitment before you go, okay? So you say, well, I'm not going to a networking group today. Fine. All right, make that same commitment, but still meet 10 new people, 10 people who you did not know before, and do that exact same thing. And do that this entire week. Do that until uh, the next episode 18 comes out. (laughs) Keep doing it over and over and over again. Uh, And keep it at the same number, but do it every day and see how, how much character you build just making sure that you keep that commitment. And then it says commitment, exactly, moved us into action. So you can hear how the two go together, right? I said I was going to do X, and therefore that means I should act Y. So there are going to be certain things that you need to do. One of the things that I used to um, say to people a lot, especially you know a, a few years ago when things weren't so great, I, I would say things like five a day keeps poverty away. Five a day. That's five yeses. Five people who said yes to me, to my product, my service, my offer, whatever, kept poverty away. And I, I believe that very, very true. Depending on what it is, that you are offering as a product or a service, you have a very, very good chance of changing your situation in, in a very short period of time uh, to be able to create more income. I mean, my goal uh, was, at least at the beginning, was to create more income in one month than I used to make all year. And five yeses a day can do that, which means that you have to do something to generate those yeses, it means you have to open your mouth or figure out a way to place an ad to get your phone to ring five or more times so that you can have those conversations and have people to say yes. You got to learn how to talk to people and use what is popularly known as an elevator uh, pitch or script, etc. Um, I like it as I like teaching it as an audio business card. And here's a quick one for you. For those of you who are like, okay, well, I'd like to, you know, use the three foot rule. I think that's something Zig Ziglar would say, the three foot rule, right? so that you have the ability to go out there and generate leads and and get this conversation going. One of my favorite, and that I've always used, uh, that can open any conversation. So this would be an opener, um, and it's a very simple one. It's, and here it is. It was like, have you ever considered getting involved in real estate investing? It's a simple question, but it has so broad of a reach that I I like it a lot because by using that question, I can uh, find buyers, sellers, as well as those who have, you know, capital available or want to be involved in real estate in various other ways. So it's a very powerful question that begins to send things down the direction I want to go. Here's another one, uh, a question that you could ask a anyone that has a real estate license. It is, do you have anything that could be seller financed? If you ask someone who is actively listing properties and you ask them that question, one of the things I like about it is that it leads to a deal because seller financed, if they already know it could be seller financed, it's because there's an indication of distress. It can't go traditional. It can't get a normal loan or something of that nature, which is exactly what you and I are looking for. We love those things. Okay. And then, uh, you know, the, the quote continues, right? And discipline that enabled us to follow through. And it takes discipline. It takes denial of self to do the same activities over and over and over again. I think I was at a T. Harv Ecker seminar when he was talking about the fact that business should be boring. And I was like, what on earth is this man talking about? Why should business be boring? I don't want things to be boring. <laughs> That's the very reason I'm in business. I, I want to have a different experience every year. I don't want to have the same experience for 20 years and, and call that 20 years of experience. I want to have new experiences every year for 20 years. And what I began and now appreciate about what he said was the fact that it's, it should be the same activities repeated consistently. And as you learn to repeat those activities consistently over and over and over again, yeah, that may come across as boring. But what is also is exercising is discipline. 
How many of us give up on a particular real estate strategy simply because the first three offers didn't work or the first three times we looked at a at something or anything in this particular area didn't work and we got scared and quit? And, you know, we didn't go back and try it again. We didn't keep pushing the button until it worked. We didn't keep finding our own particular way of using the script. So, and, and this is one of the things that I don't like about scripts is that sometimes we take them and we try to just read them. And that's that removes the human element from using a script. Sure, you can use it as a way to get started, but understand the major skill set inside of speaking with people is listening. And as you learn to listen better, your deals get better because you're starting to listen for problems, not properties. And as you listen for those problems, you learn to develop new solutions based upon your new skill sets, etc. And I it is all of these things that I think, and I could be wrong, but I'm not 100% sure, but I know this. Inside the, the mastermind group, it creates a different type of an environment. And that different type of environment allows and gives someone the excuse to finally become the person that they know they are inside and go out there and actually write the offers and talk to the sellers and be willing uh, to risk you know, their ego and look stupid uh, so that they might be able to gain learning. And as you gain that learning, you continue to go and revise and repeat and you revise and repeat until you create whatever you call to be, you know, success. All right. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a break for a second on the topic and get right back to the cash flow question. Remember last week's question? Uh, and we're going to answer that now. The winner will receive a signed autographed copy of my upcoming book, Cash Flow Creation System, How to Create Wealth in Any Economy. And uh, if you did not answer or have not been able to participate before, you want to send in your answers to cashflowquestions at cashflowdiary.com and make sure that you include your physical mailing address so that we can actually send you the book. Okay, here we go. Last week's question was, what is the two-word phrase that some people use when they talk about inflation as it relates to the currency? What is the two-word phrase? The phrase we were looking for is purchasing power, purchasing power. Here's why that's important for you, either as a real estate investor or just in general in life. What it comes down to is, you know, what a dollar is able to purchase is its power. So let's say a hundred years ago, what would a U.S. dollar purchase? And the question is, will that U.S. dollar purchase the same amount of goods, products, and services today? Of course, the answer is no. So therefore, the dollar has lost its purchasing power, its strength, its ability to be used to purchase more goods, products, and services. And that's one of the things that you want to pay attention to as you're going out there, either fixing and flipping, buying and holding, uh, whatever it is that you're doing. Or maybe you're just listening to this to continue to generate a business that allows you uh, the absolute choice of what it is that you want to do. Understanding purchasing power and time value of money and these types of concepts will make a significant difference in, or it should make a significant difference in what it is that you invest your time in and money in and other resources so that you have the ability to go out there and create a bigger, better future for yourself and your family. So remember purchasing power. Uh, next time someone comes up with the word inflation and understand that it, in a very real way, when money sits, it becomes worth less. All right. So this week's question again uh, for the signed autograph copy is in residential real estate, what is the more formal name for the offer? I repeat, in residential real estate, what is the more formal name for the offer? Again, send your answers into cashflow questions at cashflowdiary.com, and the first person to answer will get the book. Excellent. So let's get back to what to do to guarantee results. There's a, a phrase out there that I've heard. It's called move at the speed of instruction. And one of the things that I remember I, I ask 
those that are that work with me in any p- particular capacity to gain some additional insight inside of real estate or business, et cetera, is that you learn to move at the speed of instruction. And I think that's been a very good benefit for those inside the mastermind group. But here's what I really think made the difference for them is they just didn't really care that they might not get it right. I think they were able to put their ego aside and say, you know what, now or never, and make, and they've been making it happen. And it's been so encouraging. In fact, I cannot uh, express just how excited I am to actually speak with them tomorrow and speak about all the new things that they've now learned. Because see, Here's one thing. There's a such thing as, you know, book knowledge, right? But there's a whole new level of knowledge out there called experiential knowledge, right? But you don't have any experiential knowledge until you're willing to risk the opportunity to go make a mistake, period. You just don't have it. And what's unique is now when you go read the exact same book or books or seminars or whatever, be you know, after you have experiential knowledge. So you would read a, you read a book uh, before you had experiential knowledge, and then you reread it after you have the experiential knowledge. And it suddenly feels like a different book. And that's what I'm looking forward to. I know that our next conversation that we're going to have uh, inside of our session is going to be so different because they're going to have experiential knowledge now. And I'm looking forward to it because I know what that means. I know the next step is not just getting your first deal done, but your first hundred. And th- this is happening so so quickly for them, and I'm so excited uh, that I, I wanted to bring this to you because I want you to think about and ask yourself this question. What is it that has been uh, preventing me from taking action? Now, I know some of you just said, well, I don't know what to do. You do know what to do. You just haven't done what you know. Here's what I mean by that. Most of you know, if you're listening to my voice right now, you know that in order to buy real estate, at some point, you must write an offer. Period. You can't buy real estate without giving the seller an offer, either orally or, you know, written. You know you've got to do it, but you haven't done it. Now you say, well, I, I don't know what to write the offer for. It doesn't matter what you write the offer for. I want you to go write it because in the process of writing it, you'll become a different person. In the process of writing it, you'll learn things about yourself and the process of real estate investing that you didn't know that you needed to know. And you'll have bigger, better, different questions uh, for your mentors, etc. And that's what's going to keep you in this stage of being able to create results. And at the end of the day, I think in a very real way, and again, I'm not trying to say anything about uh, any body school system or upbringing or what have you, but I, I think in a very real way, one of the things that we all learn while going through whatever you know school system you went through is we learned that making mistakes was bad and that we had to have it perfect before we quote unquote tried. We didn't want to turn in our homework unless we had all the answers right or unless we had them or unless we thought we had them all right. Some of us found out that even the ones that we thought were right weren't really right. Right. Anyway, you get my point. And I'm I want to encourage you to do like the members in the mastermind group have been doing. I, I'm going to encourage you to find places where you can congregate and and find like minded minds and people who are out there trying new things and feeling uncomfortable and putting themselves in situations in which, you know, they may have never said these words this way before. And what they're out there doing is generating a new result for themselves. Because see, out there, there's this thing called the success cycle. Again, something that you may know about if you've listened to Zig or or, um, Brian Tracy or many of these other gentlemen, right? The success cycle. And and, And it goes very simply like this. Confidence creates activity. Activity creates results. Results creates confidence. And then confidence creates activity. And then activity creates results. And then those results creates more confidence. And it's a very self-fulfilling building prophecy that, if you will, 
uh, that allows you to continue to go out there and do bigger things and keep going and keep pushing. And, you know, it's, it can be very addicting and contagious and it's good. The question is, is where does confidence come from? How do you get the cycle started? And most of the time, what I have witnessed in myself and in others is that confidence gets started usually from an external source who is already on fire, igniting an internal source inside of you. Now, some people will call that motivation. That's, I I agree, very true. Uh, Because motivation comes from the outside and then affects us. What I'm going to ask you to do is to turn that motivation into inspiration. So I'm hoping that if you've listened this far in this particular episode that you're wondering, you know, things like, well, yeah, what, what, what property could I write an offer on, you know, today? And, you know, I did write an offer once, but I didn't follow through on it. Kind of like the quote said, discipline that enabled you to follow through. Because sometimes it's interesting, you know, we can take the first steps of writing the offer, but we write it, but we don't want to really, we, <laughs> who knows, you might not actually send it in. And if you do send it in and someone says yes, you might get scared and just not follow through. Or someone, you know, says yes, and then it's in escrow and then something comes up and, and instead of figuring out how to solve the problem, you just say, okay, I guess it's not a good deal because you're scared. And I understand all of those things. What I'm asking you to do, though, is to develop the character to get, that gets you out of bed. Commit to the action steps that I've mentioned. And have the discipline, the guts, if you will, to follow it through. And I want you to go write an offer. I don't care for how much. Write it for a dollar. <laughs> write it for a dollar if you have to. But write the offer. Because you're going to learn so much about yourself, about your marketplace, about how to do business just by writing the offer. So in closing, what I, one of the things I did want to say is start before you're ready. I think that's been a secret uh, that has not been told to enough people is we're, you know, back at home or in our cubicles or, you know, maybe in our car or jogging, whatever it is you're doing right now as you're listening you're getting ready to get ready so that you can get ready. (laughs) And what you really need to do is just take an action step. Go forward, fail, fall on your face. Just put your hands out so you don't totally mess up your head, you know? That's all you got to do, catch yourself. And a lot of your friends and, and fellow companions should be there to catch you as well. But start before you're ready. Write the offer because you're going to learn more in that process, like I said, about yourself and what it will take than any book, seminar, or podcast can ever tell you. You're missing the concept of experiential learning. Little beats experience. Until next time. Thank you for investing your time with Jay Massey and the Cash Flow Diary. When you have a moment, please visit iTunes and leave a positive comment about the show. And go now to our website, CashflowDiary.com, to take advantage of our free business building course, Cash Flow Foundation. Gain the knowledge, understanding, and skill that will teach you how to never need a job again. Until next time. Until next time. Until next time.